What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 109 of Park to Prem here with Talor Town. We're in the process of another board takeover. I'm just going to I'm saying that now. No further updates. This is the third takeover that's happened so far this season that's not happened. I'm I'm already guessing it won't happen. It's bizarre because every time the kind of takeover fails, Alexander Mutkin, our chairman, then says he loves the club and he doesn't want to leave and then within a month he's talking about leaving again. So who really knows what the hell's happening at the moment? Anyway, you might have caught it at the top on the homepage. If you didn't notice this, you certainly noticed this. We are fifth in the Premier League, folks, in November. That feels good, doesn't it? Yes, after 12 games of the season have been played, whilst a few behind us have got games in hand, we sit on 22 points and we look pretty good. Today we are going to be taking on Manchester City. Now, of course, last episode we took on Chelsea. Not such a great result there, but then we did beat Tottenham in the Cup. And, uh, well, we're going to hope that today we can maybe get a result against Man City, although it's going to be difficult. Let's just admit that right now. But uh, a win here... And I would genuinely start to say European football is the aim this year. A top seven finish is what we're going for. Now, of course, things can change quite a lot. And I will hold my hands up and say that we are winning games by narrow margins. We'll talk about the results specifically in a second. But you can see here, goals scored. We've only scored 20. Goals against, we've conceded 15. Like There isn't a massive difference there. And when you compare it to all the teams above us... There is quite a contrast. We probably should discuss Sheffield United, who have scored 9 and conceded 10 in 12 games. And yet they're 6th. That is incredible. That makes me feel like we're not fluking things so much. It's kind of bizarre. When, you, when you're winning lots of games by narrow margins like we have, um, you might go, well, that's just, you're getting lucky, really. But actually, a lot of the games where we've been playing, I feel like the results could have been even more in our favour, to be honest. Now, of course, as I said last episode, we took on Chelsea and Tottenham. You can see since then, we've had a little run of games, including the EFL Cup, which we'll talk about now immediately. We got knocked out in it in a 92nd minute. I'm, I'm upset, but... We're not going to the final of the EFL Cup like we, we did previously, so we're focusing on the league until at least the FA Cup comes around. But in the league, we've looked very, very good. You can see we started off with a game against West Ham. It was away from home at the London Stadium, and GCL, the Brazilian who I've been questioning over recent episodes, he came to life in this game. What an incredible first goal in this match in the 50th minute. Hammered it home into the top right corner. Not long after, Shretsov with a tidy little finish just down to the right of the goalkeeper after they didn't deal with our initial corner. And, uh, well, whilst they did score via Anthony on the breakaway in the 62nd minute, that was all she wrote. A flurry of goals to open the second half, but we held on, we held firm, and, uh, yeah, we were very much worth our 2-1 win in that game. The next fixture we had was against Crystal Palace. This game finished 3-0 and the goals came pretty late on in this match. We actually missed a penalty right before half-time via Shretsov, but in the second half we looked good. Great to see Lazarus getting involved in the play. And also Jamal Lewis, who slotted in at left-back with Ox suspended, managed to get an assist this game. So, yeah, good little stuff, some really tidy finishing, and even CC got on the score sheet. You can see, looking at the stats in the bottom left, we were rampant in this game. We've been really, really good. But yeah, good to see CC get a goal. We had a few suspensions, a few injuries, so he was on the bench and I felt like giving him a bit of game time at 2-0 up. And he did his thing. Anyway, the next game we had against West Brom was, well, if you would just look at the stats in the bottom left, pretty close. Unfortunately, we did lose it 2-0. Two goals very late on. The second one was mostly conceded because we were throwing men forward. Um, I feel like we had the better chances in this game. I'm now trying to remember. I feel like we had a lot of half chances that we didn't really take. But unfortunately, as a wise man once said, if you don't score... You can't win a football match. And well, unfortunately for us, they got one through Haynes. And then Greg Cronin uh, even got one in the 94th minute. And uh, well, that kind of scuffered a little bit of momentum that we've been building, it would be fair to say. We then took on Bournemouth. Narrow win, but Adrian Highland with the goal there. That was great to see him get a goal. It was a corner. We've been pretty good from set pieces so far this year. The 21-year-old not getting a load of assists or goals, but his average ratings have been very, very solid, especially when you compare them to, say, Andre Dezel or Matcha last time we were in this situation. Anyway, we then had the cup game against Southampton. A loss. I'm not going to dwell on it. A 4-2 win followed against Tottenham. Good result, great result, great, great result, I think. Nice to see a variety of goal scores. You can see Ox and Deacon, two fullbacks, getting goals. Threats of an Andre also with goals there. And then most recently, we took on Everton. And what a superb first goal for us in this game. Great passing play. Great to see Volta get the goal as well. We tore them apart through the middle. And, uh, well, then they got a goal through Junior Lowell, unfortunately. And, 
we had to settle for a draw. It was a, a tight game. Everton have been struggling this year. They were very good last year, mind you. So I knew it was going to be difficult. And away from home, to be honest, at the start of the year, I would have bitten your hand off for a point. So we are going to happily take that today. So anyway, today we're going to be taking on Man City, who are managed by Zinedine Zidane. Yes, they've got a very, very good team. You can see Mike Frost is their key player. He's almost as good as the Chelsea kid. He might be better than the Chelsea kid. Let's compare them. Let's, I'm, I'm, I'm now really curious. Chelsea had a, a nutty striker of their own, didn't they, in Bittner? They're both... Oh, my word. Germany's got, like, a golden generation of strikers here. Have they both played internationally? They must have done. They, they are ridiculous as a pairing. I mean, at least they're not at the same club, so we've not got to worry about that. But the, the German national team for the next 15 years is going to be dominated by these guys. Right, well, I didn't think it was going to be harder than last time out, but this is probably going to be diff more difficult because I think Frost is actually a better player. He's absolutely nuts, and it's not entirely surprising to see Man City where they are. You can see they've had a run where they finished second the last three seasons. They're currently top of the league, so they're going to be desperate to get a win today. Anyway, in a little bit of off-the-pitch stuff, it's worth noting our facilities, I believe, are going to be finished being upgraded tomorrow. Indeed they are. So we're going to finish this game, then we'll hit continue a few times and we'll have a look at those upgrades. Although, at this point, we, we know what's going to happen. We're going to get an extra half a star on our team profile page, and we're going to feel really good about ourselves Hopefully this takeover doesn't happen. Imagine if I got sacked because of a takeover. Genuinely don't know what I would do then. Anyway, you can see the estimated value of the club has rocketed up this year. That, that is much higher than it was last time we were in the Premier League. And that is because the club value is based on a variety of factors. It's based on your stadium, your assets, such as your facilities, and also your player values. You know, all your player values get added up. And our player values are a lot better now than they were previously. And of course, we've got a load of money in the bank as well. In fact, we've been making a profit every month since we were back in the Premier League. It's not quite the profit that we were making last time we were here, but um, it does mean that we could afford to spend a little bit more. And I do anticipate a very large transfer budget to appear at some point in the future. Um, genuinely, that could end up being 60 or 70 million pounds, either in January or come the summer. I have continued to do some spending of youngsters, you know. I have been continuing to scope out the talent and find some talent. I discovered that Denmark is having a weird golden generation thing, it feels like, where they've just got a load of insane Danish players. He says as he clicks the one player from uh, Switzerland. Is AAB a Danish team? They are. Well, that there was the confusion. But yes, if we look at the Danish under-21 team, they've got a load of, like, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. The ones in orange we've agreed to sign. The ones who aren't in orange... Well, maybe I should be signing some of them, but some of these have already arranged moves to go to the likes of Inter Milan and Arsenal. It's like it's like I arrived a few seconds too late. Of course, a few of these we looked at last time. But yeah, continuing to look at players. I had a few comments after yesterday's video asking about how I've been finding players. Honestly, I think the best way to find youngsters is just to go through all the national team under 21s. You'll find a ton of talent and... You know, if there's a 16-year-old player who's not playing in the under-19s or the under-20s and they're already in the under-21s, they're usually pretty good, particularly if they're a larger nation. But anyway, let's shift our focus here. As I said, a win here, and I will start to mutter under my breath European football this season. In fact, even if we don't win this, I think it may well end up becoming an aim, because we have played a lot of the big teams around us already. In terms of our team for today's game, a um, little bit of news. You can see here we've got a ton of injuries in the midfield. Andre suspended, but Alvarez and Cece both sus injured means that Shutterworth is on the bench, yes. And you can see here, Lazarus coming back from a little injury that he's had. As a result, Deacon is going to slot in at right back. He's already played a few games for us then. He's done pretty well. Has semi-frequently come on off the bench, of course. On loan from Manchester United. Hopefully, he's going to have a point to prove here against Man City. And also worth remembering that with this player, we have already agreed a deal with Manchester United, which means we can sign him for £20 million if we wish. Now, I'm not going to even pretend that he's close to being valued at 20 million pounds just yet but if he was to explode and become this crazy player for us throughout the season it's an option in goal we've got morrigan continues to do his thing of course club captain I, I don't feel like i say it enough what a redemption story for this guy because he's 25 years old if we just look at his career stats he was signed from valencia to atletico for 2.2 million pounds Aged only 17, he was signed for over £11 million by Milan, and he never made it. They ne never gave him chances, never really shone. We then picked him up for £1 million, and 
I feel like it, this could be a weird analogy, you know those animal rescue YouTube channels where they kind of take stray animals in or, you know, you've seen them with the kittens and there's some cute music playing in the background. That's how I feel about Morrigan. I feel like I've taken him in and over the course of the last year, we've built up his confidence, we've given him that regular first team football and he does not look out of place in our team and he's club captain now. I mean, what a redemption story there. Anyway, at centre-back, we're going to go with Maggie and Douglas, of course, two youngsters, two very, very good players. So far this year, have they wowed me? Have they blown my mind I mean probably not but they've kind of done what they need to do obviously over the summer the centre-back position was the one area of the pitch I was looking at improving it's still an area that I would like to investigate further but for now these two guys are doing their job Highland's been good in the middle scored not that long ago Ox has had a few issues with injuries and suspensions but he's back in the team today and continuing to do his thing, which is obviously superb to see. Matasevich going to come in and play for us his first Premier League start of the season. As you've seen with a load of injuries and suspensions, he gets a chance. He has come on off the bench eight times this year, so he is getting first team football opportunities. But what I want to draw your attention to is the fact he's got 14 caps and eight goals for Bosnia's national team. Only 20 years old. I mean, he's got a bright, bright future ahead of him and he's been developing a ton. Lots of potential still to fulfil. Maybe a little run of starts in the first team could do him a load of good. Leskinen to the right, or should I say, yeah, no Leskinen. We have to, you have to roll the R. I'd even roll it very well there. It has to be done. But um, he's been great for us on his set pieces, just top drawers, especially his free kick taking. Um, has really, really pleasantly surprised me. I feel like him and Andre actually, as our two main box-to-box -box centre mids, are quite complementary. Leskinen, you know, he's a bit more technically gifted both going forward and defensively. Um, meanwhile, Andre's kind of the workhorse, a bit more physical, a bit quicker. But they play off each other really, really well. It's a shame that Andre is unavailable for today's game through suspension. And then up top, we have a little trio. You can see a green triangles appearing. It's good times here. GCL playing at centre attack in mid is slowly finding his groove. Had that flash of brilliance against West Ham. We'll hope for more of that. Of course, the, the big news really is the fact he's not got injured again recently, which is good. I mean, we signed him for £9 million, so I feel like that fee was... It was low. It was very low. It, we probably should have been paying a lot more. I guess the fact he's valued at £30 million resembles that. But at the same time, I probably wouldn't have paid more than £15 million for him because of that injury proneness. That just scares me a bit too much, despite how incredible he is. But he's looked really good. And obviously, he's forming a little bit of a relationship with Turnbull and Shvetsov, who you may notice is now playing as an advance forward rather than as a complete forward. And uh, well, between these two guys, the goals haven't flown like the last time we were in the Premier League. But they have been scoring, you know, reasonably consistently. You can see Shvetsov has been in better form as of late. Dylan Turnbull not particularly been great at the races. Let's see if he can do it for us today. On the bench, kind of the usual suspects. We've got Jamal Lewis there. Uh, you can see we've got Cheney there. Lazarus, who's not really fit, probably won't play as there as well as an alternative to Deacon. Shuttleworth makes a surprise inclusion with all the centre mid injuries. Volta, Ricky Williams, and of course, Charlie Brown, who got a goal last episode. And he's quickly becoming kind of my, my go-to super sub. He hasn't actually had to come on much recently because we've not been down in too many games. But in matches where we're struggling to find our way through, we're struggling to get that goal, he's kind of the, the first call of action. Of course, Ricky Williams, formerly of Manchester City. So uh, he's got a point to prove. He was sold by Zidane to us last January. Anyway, early action here. We're called into defending of a set piece. I still, it's weird, right? Because this game, as I've said, if we can do well in this game, I will be like, yes, European football, it's on the cards. If we don't do well in this game, it's not really going to define our season. We are already way, way on the road to safety. Obviously, the last couple of episodes, we've managed matches against a lot of the big teams. I think following on from today's episode, we're going to look at some more winnable games. That's not to say today isn't winnable, but if the ball's going to just bounce to them like that, maybe it's not. Um, but I am conscious, and this is a weird thing to be conscious of, but last episode, last season someone commented saying, Jack, it's obvious that you reload games because you win games that you're not doing live and then you come back and lose. And it's, I, I take the point. I mean, it's fair enough. I don't win as often as I do off screen. That's because I'm usually managing against all the big teams and doing the matches that I don't expect us to win that I think are going to be more competitive as the live comms. But so far in live comms this year, we've looked reasonably competitive. Of course, we did beat Aston Villa to start the year. Let's not forget that. But um, well, right now against the team top of the league, I am a little bit worried. As Phil Foden charges through, Morrigan makes a huge, huge stop there. Great little stop by him in goal, to be honest. And, uh, well, they've got a set piece here. Marcos to try and maybe whip it in. He loops it back post, headed away by Douglas, who never wins anything in the air. Could we hit them on the break? GCL to Shvetsov, who... 
just just knocks it straight into their defender and any excitement about a possible counter-attack vanishes i will say oh that's not good that's mm, mm, that's Turnbull injured let's hope that's nothing serious potential foot injury a bruised ankle would be fine bruised ankle gone be a bruised ankle or a broken toe no broken toe would be bad I don't know. Either way, this is the first game all year where we have done nothing, which leaves me a little bit concerned. We have been bullied so far in this match. Man, I feel like I need to change something tactically, but I don't really have a plan B up my sleeve besides switching back to the 4-4-2. There have been the odd games where I've moved the fullbacks, you know, into a more defensive position and kind of played a more traditional 4-1-2-1-2 with a diamond midfield. Don't really want to do that in this game just yet. I mean, we'll, we'll wait and see how things play out because Charlie Brown's throwing goal. Tackle flies in. Continue to press Charles. I don't know why I've called him Charles. I, I don't know. M maybe he comes from a wealthy family or something. Charles is just a, a more posh version of Charlie Brown. Anyway, Foden. Morrigan is huge for us. They've had two clear-cut chances, five half chances. Game in the Spanish national team, folks. Pr proving why he's club captain so far this game. He has kept us in this. He's probably staring over at the sideline thinking, Jack, please, please change the system. Please make it more defensive. Let, let's do it for you. Let's do it. Do it for him. I don't, I don't want to do that change. What I'm thinking is we move GCL into the middle and we just try and crowd things out. Is that a mad idea? I don't think this is a bad idea at all. I'm going to change Charlie Brown to be a deep line forward on support as well. That's his preferred role. He's quite a good player creatively, even though he's really good in the air. He's, you know, good at shielding the ball, good at holding it up. Also has quite good intelligence off the ball, which we may require in this game. I mean, here's the thing, right? It's half-time. Still only 1-0. Still only... I mean, massively down to Morrigan, it's got to be said. I'm still worried about that Turnbull injury. But it's only one. It's We could hit them on the counter. I want to believe... I am half tempted to change the cautious here and go a bit more direct and a bit quicker with our play up the pitch. Let's look to play out the defence a little bit less, shall we? Um, I'm not sure if there's any further changes. This is one of those games, let's be honest. If, you, if you've managed in Football Manager and been promoted, you know what this kind of game is. It's the same as when you play against Manchester United, who are always very good in Football Manager. Although I suppose this year's been a bit different. At least from my experience. I feel like Liverpool are the new Manchester United where it feels like they're always good. And I'm saying that as a Liverpool fan. But um, no, I feel like these are the games where when you go up, you kind of just clinch and you kind of just hope that maybe you can hit them on the break a few times and punish them. Anyway, I'm going to bring in Volta um, for Leskinen who is struggling with tiredness. I've got one last change in my pocket. You know what, Shvetsov, you've let me down today. Ricky Williams against his former club. 17 minutes to show us what he's made of. I don't, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but we're on the attack here. We've had three shots on target all game. The long throw is launched forward. Volta, do something magical. Do something. Oh, I thought it was going to go in the bottom corner. We've battled hard in this game. We've committed 21 fouls. It's not been a pretty game. But if we only lose to them 1-0, I'd be pretty happy with that when you've seen that they're, they're star striker. We're still in it, though. We could still get a draw. Hold the phone. Brown does an awful back pass. We are in danger. Douglas, do something smart. Magic, can you whis whisper up some magic? I don't know. How do you do magic? Can you whisper it up? I don't know. Do it under your breath. What are you going to do, mate? Do something magical. Just don't give the ball away. Just yield back to Douglas. Look at this. This is really nice play out of the back. Deacon, what can you do, my friend? To Charlie Brown or Charles Brown. Fred Rugicio, finish that. Oh, it's gone wide. I thought it was in for a second. Oh, we could have had we could have had the win if we'd taken both the chances that we've had, and it's going to finish 1-0. I mean, to be fair, in the second half, they did absolutely nothing against us, to the point where I almost want to take that tactical change we just did and train that to be our plan B tactic, because it actually looked quite good and we could easily adapt to that. A 1-0 defeat against Man City at home? Is it is it weird for me to be kind of sat here thinking, hmm, that's pretty, pretty good, really. <laughs> I, I'm relatively happy. It could have been worse, of course. Turnbull out for four to five weeks. And that's right before Christmas. So if he's out for four to five weeks, that's going to be probably the next five games he's missing. That is a, a yowzers from me. That is a big problemo for us to deal with. You can see we've got Watford here in seventh, then Brighton in 17th. A few tricky games against the likes of Manchester United and Liverpool are also around the corner. 
further ahead, we've got Sheffield United, who are, of course, up in sixth on Boxing Day. So that could be an issue with Turnbull being injured for those games. It might be an opportunity, I guess, for Charlie Brown or Ricky Williams to show us what they're made of. We've, ne we've never really needed that plan B striker. I can't recall a time where Turnbull and Shvetsov have been out for an extended period of time. Anyway, you can see here, youth and training facilities upgraded... That's exciting. Let's do an opening ceremony. I'm, I'm mimicking scissors with my fingers. Like I'm cutting a ribbon. Right. Snip. There you go. It's open, everyone. Three and a half stars. It's great. I want it to be better than the great. Though. I want it to be amaze balls. Can we get amaze balls facilities, please? Improve them again. It's not going to know. Thank you, Mr. Mutkin. Can we do the youth facilities as well? <laughs> Look at that. He just wants to make me happy. I mean, it's £8 million we're spending to upgrade them further. It'll be done next year, which is exciting stuff um any, anything else that i could request whilst i'm here i did recently ask for more transfer and wage budget but he told me to bugger off okay a new contract oh he really he really wants to make me happy he really wants to make me happy we're gonna get a new contract tomorrow i mean we'll we'll hang around for that let's see how much money we're gonna get offered is it gonna be a premier league contract uh there's i'm curious actually quickly what is my what is my current contract what is my... I actually don't know. Which I feel like when you work for a company, you should probably know how much you're on. Okay, I want about £6,000. What, what are they offering me? I want 20 They've got some recommendations for me. They're offering me 13 I mean, how about this? You don't have to give me as much of a rise, but I want a five-year deal. I've seen a few comments, actually, in the past about why, why would you want as much money as possible? Why not just set this down to zero, you know, and save the money? And the reason is that... This contract and the time left on your contract, the amount that you're due to be paid over that period of time, um, is what is used to calculate the compensation for the club to sack you. So if you're on a massive five-year contract and you're only, I don't know, in your second year of it, it becomes very, very expensive for the club to sack you and so they're a lot less likely to do it. Either way, it's a new deal. We've doubled our money. I'm very, very exciting. And uh, actually, it was a five-year deal, wasn't it? Because we negotiated it because we're hagglers. Aston Villa have sacked their manager. That's a pretty early sacking, isn't it? I guess we're a ten, 10 or so games into the year and they have spent £100 million. Pounds, or almost £200 million. Pounds. Where, are, where are they in the league? They're in 14th. That is very harsh to sack him there. But I guess we have to remember that 13 years into the future, Aston Villa's aspirations are a little higher than a 14th in the Prem. But anyway, you can see a load of games have been played around us. Is there is there more games to be played today? The three o'clock kickoffs. Let's see who's playing. So Liverpool are playing. I think Chelsea must be playing on the Sunday. I can't be bothered to hang around for the Sunday football. I, I want to go and watch it at home. So we'll see how Liverpool get on here. They are now one of our rivals. Or at least that's what I'm going to tell myself. They've won. Well, that's unfortunate because that's going to mean that the Champions League spots are slowly pulling a little further away from us. We're now four points off the Champions League spots. I mean, that's that's an indication of where our season's at right now. The fact that we're even contemplating that. I guess at this point, we're a third of the way through the season. We're on course for a, about a 60-point season. That's really good. Of course, just as a reminder, 38 points is what's usually required to be safe. We got 37 points last time we were in the league. So, um, I don't know. F five more wins and we'll be, you know, safe just about. Maybe six more wins. Which, uh, considering where we are in the season, feels quite doable at this point. But anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. A good result, even if it was a defeat. Obviously, the takeover stuff is going to be a little bit interesting. I'm sure we'll have more to say on that next time around. In terms of when we'll be back next episode, I'm fancying the Sheffield United game, you know. I, I feel like Sheffield United, it's not as glamorous as, as Manchester United or Liverpool, but we've played a few home games against the big boys, and uh, it's a Boxing Day game. We may even pair it up with the Bournemouth game, so we play a few games which, really, we should be winning, and I would back us to win. And considering we're going to be playing Manchester United and Liverpool before that, they're going to be games that we probably are going to need to win to really keep our European aspirations alive. But anyway, that is all from me today. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Let me know what you thought of the tactical switch we did towards the end of that game. I think it might be something worth exploring, so I might even go and set that up as an alternative tactic now. Uh, of course, let me know your thoughts. If you've got any other thoughts on the series as a whole, let me know them. I always appreciate your feedback and thoughts. And other than that, that's all from me today. Tomorrow is episode 110. I hope to see you guys then. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.